Hi, Jana. Welcome to P Magazine booth here at Intersolar. Hi, thank you for having me. Jana, uh, Wood McKenzie recently launched a new PV module manufacturer ranking. Uh, yes, this is true. In June this year, we launched our first uh, PV module uh, manufacturer ranking. Before, we had inverter and tracker ranking, but now we are doing it for modules as well. Uh, this ranking is uh, very unique for the market because it features uh, not only uh, like capacity or shipments, but it has nine different criteria that evaluate solar manufacturers from all the angles. And so it's very comprehensive ranking. And it will be a biannual publication, right? Uh, yes, it will be biannual. And okay, about uh, solar energy manufacturing, we're currently dealing with a scenario of uh, overcapacity. What's your opinion on, on this overcapacity? Is it sustainable? It is definitely not sustainable, and uh, we will have to uh, lose some players uh, in the market, especially the players who are not vertically integrated, the players who cannot support themselves with uh, their own cells and wafers. Um, also, uh, uh, there are some more new players who came to the market, and then they have to withdraw because they cannot survive in current market conditions. But overall, uh, the tendency to increase capacity remains. And uh, all the big players, they plan to increase and increase and increase their capacity, even though they have already over one gigawatt of capacity. They believe that they can ship that much. So I think you think they will somehow have to backpedal on these announcements at, uh, at some point? Yes, I believe so. I believe some manufacturers, they will have to cancel their expansion or just like keep quiet about it, like try, hope that people will forget about it. And of course this applies mostly to Chinese manufacturers, which are competing with each other in a very fierce way. Yeah, mostly Chinese manufacturers, but also uh, in the US, because there have been over 200 gigawatt of announcement in the US, and it's definitely not happening, 200 gigawatt of module capacity by like 2025. Uh, so a lot of uh, cancellations are happening there, and of course a lot of cancellations are happening in China. And assuming that the overcapacity will continue for a while, do you expect module prices to drop further? Uh, yes. Uh, what we see from the market, we see that the module prices surprisingly uh, keep going down. Uh, especially for Chinese tenders, for Chinese government tenders, uh, because they're huge uh, in gigawatts. So the suppliers are trying their best to win these uh, tenders to keep their capacity running. And they are betting ridiculously low prices. Like the lowest price that we uh, heard at uh, Snack last week was like eight cents, eight dollar cents per watt. That's just crazy. That's crazy, but is this the bottom line or maybe we can see even lower prices? I don't think we can, will see lower prices. In fact, I think that uh, a lot of contracts, they eventually will be renegotiated. There is a tendency like manufacturers, they will offer you a very low price, but when it comes the time to sign the contract, they might come to you and say, hey, we are going to increase the price. And then when you are at the stage, when you have designed your plant already, you have no other options and you have to go with this, with this module and with this new price. And well, I mean, um, Wood McKenzie also released an outlook on a new deployment uh, for a you know, new capacity uh, uh, globally and it was very conservative. I mean, that's a stable but flat growth over the next eight years. Do you confirm this outlook considering the recent developments? Uh, so we talked with uh, uh, many manufacturers during SNAC and uh, most of manufacturers agree with us, with our uh, um, outlook, that it's going to be like this kind of conservative growth. But I think that we can expect some uh, uh, unexpected uh, announcements from the governments, some big tenders, which will add capacity significantly, for example, from China. Exactly. So the demand may be particularly strong in, in China again this year, right? Yes, this is what we expect. We expect that demand from China will uh, stay very high, will stay around 200 gigawatt every year, and will just add up, add up, and end up. And considering that uh, recently uh, Chinese uh, government was paying more attention to PV industry, we expect that there is going to be some like more uh, government tenders coming from uh, from the top of the government. Uh, more local provincial tenders and so on and so forth. 
example, do you also expect demand may be high in Europe due to more low model prices or maybe Europe is still a flat grow expected? Yeah, we also expect very high grow, uh, high growth in Europe. We expect around 60 gigawatts this year installation in Europe. I think that even more, plus stock. Coming to Europe, I mean, manufacturing is also being impacted by this overcapacity, this low module prices in Europe. Do you see any future for solar module manufacturing in the whole continent? I sincerely hope that there is going to be future uh, for uh, EU domestic manufacturing. Unfortunately, at this point of time, we don't see any development. There is around 3.5 gigawatt of operational, actual operational capacity in Europe right now, which is way lower than the demand, which is around 60 gigawatt. And we do not see any significant development or we didn't hear any announcements about the new factories or new capacities being open. Nor module, nor cell, nor wafer. By contrast, we are seeing a strong Indian PV industry coming and also a US industry, which is, uh, let's say, coming back. How do you see development in these two countries? So I see, uh, I think that US and India are very successful in their policies in developing their domestic manufacturing. That's because they have combined two uh, main um, criteria for the success for de developing domestic manufacturing. One is uh, uh, domestic incentives from the government, like PLI initiative uh, from Indian government and IRA from the US which uh, subsidize the manufacturing and incentivize local manufacturers to build more capacity. And th the second one, which is uh, uh, also very important, is uh, duties and tariffs on the modules from overseas, especially from China. So they are putting tariffs uh, around that much to be able for imported modules to compete with the domestic modules. So now, the at least domestic manufacturers, they have uh, they have a chance to compete with Chinese manufacturers, at least in terms of price. There are many other factors that they can compete about, like performance, reliability, certification, and so on and so applications, and so on and so forth. But at least they eliminate this factor of the price. And now it can be like more or less fair competition for domestic manufacturing. Because if you want to de develop domestic manufacture, you have to give domestic manufacturers the market share. And if it's all taken by Chinese modules, why do you need domestic manufacturing? What about the US? Uh, in the US, they are quite successful because of their uh, uh, domestic content policy. So developers, for them, it's very preferable to choose uh, modules made in the US. Um, and also, they have already, like within the past two years, they have opened around three gigawatt of capacity but it's all Chinese manufacturers who open the factories there. And, um, but they're, they're, they are having significant quality problems because ramping up uh, phase is very long and difficult. And uh, so the buyers of the US modules can expect significant delays in their procurement and uh, also some quality problems from the first batches of the modules that they are receiving. Can we expect any surprise or unexpected development for this year in the industry, in some of its segments? Uh, always. Uh, PV industry always surprises us uh, every year. Uh, so I think that uh, one of the surprises that we can expect is a uh, uh, price increase by the end of this year, or at least some uh, certainty about the future of the prices. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, some uh, uh, tenders, unexpected tenders uh, from uh, uh, Chinese government that are going to feed the capacity to maintain the uh, to help local manufacturers in China. Thank you so much for being here, Yana, and I hope to see you next year too. Thank you, likewise.